remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. Travis Cook back with you once again. And the recent situation over in Egypt has called into question our nation's foreign aid, not only to that nation particularly, but also has called into question the entire idea of foreign aid as a whole. The question has routinely been asked, especially in conservative circles lately, should America be engaged in the activity of distributing foreign aid at all? And make no mistake, in the current political environment, the current and frankly long overdue climate of fiscal responsibility that's out there in American politics right now, it is very tempting to answer that question with an unequivocal no. However, in spite of that temptation, I would not go quite that far. I would not go so far as to say we should cut off all foreign aid, period. I would never be the type of guy, and I've never been the type of guy, to go down the road of the Ron Paul libertarian isolationist group of people uh, in answering that question with an unequivocal no. I've never been that person who thinks if we just leave the rest of the world alone, they'll just leave us alone. I don't think that's realistic. I don't think it's even really possible. When you are the most successful nation in the world, as America truly is, adversaries and enemies will always try to look you up for lack of a better term they'll always try to, to test you no matter how much you try to keep to yourself or no matter how much you try to play nice with everybody else in the world and in an age where the world is smaller than it's ever been in terms of communication and interaction and in an age where america is no longer really separated from the rest of the world by massive oceans we simply must be a player in the world stage in some way, if only from the perspective of self-protection. If we try to hide from the rest of the world, as some libertarians and even some conservatives would want us to do, then really we're just sitting ducks. So some use of foreign aid to achieve these ends is not only justifiable, but necessary from where I sit. And I gotta admit it. People use the word neocon, neoconservative, like, like a derogatory term. Well, you know what? When it comes to foreign relations and, and foreign affairs, that is the one area where I'm still a neocon. I know it's a dirty word these days, but yeah, I've still got that part of the neocon uh, background to me. But even I would admit that with all of that being said, there is still clearly a huge problem with how the United States currently distributes foreign aid. Egypt is certainly an example of it. And that issue, those issues, must be addressed immediately. So what's the answer? I think one of the answers is that we as a nation must start putting conditions on all the foreign aid that we give out. And we must follow up on those conditions, meaning that you don't get our money until you accept our terms. And if you fail to live up to your end of the bargain, if you fail to live up to the terms that we set forth, this is not a negotiation, by the way. You want our money? We'll tell you what our terms are. Either you accept them or you don't. If you don't live up to your terms, we cut the money off. Cold turkey, period. No negotiation. We're the ones paying for it. You'll do what we say. What I'm looking for are measurable and quantifiable benchmarks in these nations that we're lending the money to. So we know if we're getting in return what we're paying for. I'm looking for measurable and quantifiable benchmarks in the westernization of those nations that we help. I'm looking for measurable and quantifiable benchmarks in terms of trade advantages with those nations. Trade advantages that they give us to the exclusion of other nations, particularly our enemies measurable and quantifiable benchmarks in terms of converting those nations and those peoples to a culture more like our own or to convert them to a more Judeo-Christian ethic. Yes, I think that for some nations, our foreign aid should be delivered or rejected based in large part on whether those nations, a percentage of their people, will convert to Christianity. I think that needs to be a significant part of that, particularly in nations that can be influenced by the Middle East. Without those measurable and quantifiable benchmarks, there should be not a single dime given out to anybody. Now, as a brief aside, 
some of you libertarians, some of you atheists that are listening to me, you're jumping up and down and you're madder than a wet hornet at the cultural and religious overtones of what I've just suggested. But I would suggest to you that even those of you who don't believe in religion, even those of you who are atheists, even those of you who are non-Christians, and shame on you if you are, even those of you who are out there would still have to, would still have to admit and acknowledge that when a nation emulates us and becomes more like us in a significant way, that they become far easier for America to deal with in an advantageous way. And that is what foreign aid should be entirely about. Even if you reject the Christianity aspect of this, and again, shame on you if you do, I think you could still back it on the notion that other nations converting to Christianity would be more beneficial to us in dealing with them. For that reason alone, you should be in favor of it. The bottom line is that foreign aid should no longer be about being humanitarian or should no longer be about helping move the world forward or any of that other high-minded crap. Instead, foreign aid should be about creating and enhancing advantages for America in the global sphere. Nothing more, nothing less. For far too long, our nation has approached foreign aid and our nation has invested our foreign aid and our money in other nations and simply hoped that they one day would become friendly or beneficial to us in the long run. We have effectively thrown money at the problems internationally and as we've seen domestically, you throw money at a problem and do nothing else, it doesn't work. If you spend money on something, if you invest money in something, you've got to have some way of tracking what you're getting back. You've got to have some way of measuring if that money's having the attended effect. That's what we've not done. Well, it's no longer enough. We as a nation have to assure that those nations on the receiving end of our foreign aid are becoming the type of allies that we are attempting to buy in the first place. And make no mistake about it, foreign aid is about buying the type of allies that you want. And there's nothing wrong with admitting it. But we should at least recognize it. We should also be strong enough to use the leverage of that foreign aid, the leverage of our money, to cut them off or to force change that is beneficial to us if they are not doing as we tell them to do. Foreign aid, to the extent that we have it at all, is an investment. And as such, we must invest wisely and put the conditions on that money that are advantageous to us and nobody else. And we also must be willing and strong enough and have the gall and the gumption to cut off those investments if and when we see we're not getting the return that we have demanded. We must go through the existing foreign aid that's out there with a fine tooth comb and identify those places that are not being the allies that we're buying, that we're trying to buy. And we got to cut them off. A lot of those folks will come right to the table if we do that. We might see some real change in some people once they realize that Big Daddy isn't, isn't paying them anymore. And when it comes to foreign aid, we as a nation must at long last make sure that we are getting what we are paying for. Not throwing the money out there and hoping it eventually turns around. Putting measurable conditions out there to make sure those countries turn around, they become more westernized, they become more Christian, and therefore they become more advantageous to us and less dangerous to the world as a whole. If not for that, there's no reason for foreign aid at all. That's it for this week. This is America's Evil Genius. We will see you next time.